I took no pleasure in boycotting the Yankees and the Yes Network last night. I'm just such a big fan that it hurts too much to watch the Yankees play as poorly as they've been playing and to lose as much as they've been losing with a team that was hyped up so much to be a potential championship contender. But now the Yankees have lost six straight. They've all but wiped out the gains from their 13-game win streak. And it's looking like a lost season, potentially. The Yankees are collapsing. They are circling the drain. So in all honesty, it wasn't a total boycott. I actually watched the first inning, and I saw the home run from Bo Bichette, and I thought, here we go again. So I flipped it off, literally and figuratively. And then I put on Jurassic Park, but I couldn't stay focused on that, so I kept flipping back to the game. Ultimately, I ended up settling on the movie Alien, one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And then I turned on the Yankees game for the bottom of the eighth inning forward. So I saw the home runs in the ninth inning. It was good to see Sanchez and Voigt connect, but again, solo home runs, too late in the game to make much of a difference. I did see that Nestor Cortez pitched pretty well against a really good lineup. I watched the highlights, and, you know, his stuff was good. Nestor Cortez, to me, is going to be a part of this rotation next season. He has been one of the few upsides in the 2021 season, coming from out of nowhere to make such an impact with the Yankees. The Yankees lost a starting pitcher yesterday, but it might not be for too long. Jameson Tyone has a partially torn tendon in his ankle. They think he's going to miss one start, and honestly, he needed to miss a start. I've been saying this for a while that he's looked worn out. So getting that start off will probably benefit him somewhat. You have to hope that it doesn't mean off-season surgery because that could hinder his ability to prepare for 2022. And I think that Jameson Tyone has proven that he can be a part of the rotation next year. For the most part, he's been healthy this year. I've been impressed with him. He got off to a bit of a, a slow start this year, but he really settled in once he started mixing his pitches more. Early on in the year, it was high fastball, breaking ball in the dirt. That's all he would throw. But once he started mixing in kind of a slider, started mixing in the changeup a little bit more, started throwing his pitches in different counts than he had been earlier in the year, he became a much more effective pitcher. Now, he's worn down a little bit as the season's gone along, and that was to be expected. I mean, the guy hasn't pitched much over the last couple of years, but Jameson Tyone is a guy that I think could be part of this rotation going forward. So between Garrett Cole, Nestor Cortez, and Jameson Tyone, I think you got three solid starters. Luis Heal, yeah, he had some command issues, but I got to believe the future is bright for him. Although last year I thought the future was bright for Davey Garcia, and look what happened. So it all depends on whether or not the Yankees can, you know, not screw him up, frankly. If the Yankees spend this winter on free agents, Robbie Ray, Carlos Rodon, both of those guys could be beneficial additions. They both have good stuff. They're both left-handed. I've always felt like lefties in Yankee Stadium works out well. And then you've also got Jordan Montgomery. I know some people debate whether or not he's a three or a four or a five, maybe a two. I think he's somewhere in the two to three spot in most rotations. He's not an ace, but he's a solid lefty. He's having a better age 28 season than Andy Pettit had. I'm a big Jordan Montgomery fan, obviously, because I promote myself as the uh, president of the Jordan Montgomery fan club of Gumby Nation. Once again, it seems as if the offense was pretty stagnant until the bottom of the ninth inning. I don't see any way that Marcus Timms keeps his job. I just don't. We talked about it yesterday at length. We've talked about it all season at length. Marcus Timms is not qualified to be the hitting coach of the Yankees. And it really comes down to the philosophy. And I don't know exactly what their philosophy is. The Yankees, rightfully so, kind of hold that close to their chest. But watching the Blue Jays, who are a really good offense, what do I see? I see young guys who make contact, but also swing violently, who aren't looking for the perfect pitch. They're just up there swinging as hard as they can at literally any pitch they can do some damage on. That's what it looks like to me. The Yankees, I think, are a bit too selective in what they swing at, 
But for some reason, they also simultaneously let a lot of pitches go that are very hittable right down the middle. It's just an odd scenario that's hard to articulate. They're, they're both too aggressive and too patient at the same time. They swing at pitches a foot out of the zone, and they let pitches go that are right down the middle. And I can't explain it. But watching the Blue Jays, they seem to have a better approach. They seem to just drive the ball a lot better. And, you know, maybe they have they have younger guys that are a little bit more hungry, that don't have huge contracts yet, that are playing for that next level. They just got some hungry players. Maybe that's what the Yankees need. Unfortunately, the Yankees don't have a lot of guys that are ready to go at the higher levels of the minor leagues that can step in and make a difference. It was nice to see Anthony Rizzo launch one into the right field bleachers. That was an absolute bomb. Anthony Rizzo's been a nice pickup for the Yankees. You have to consider bringing him back. Although, again, you don't want to overpay for a guy in his 30s, even though he's a solid defender, a good left-handed bat. I feel like the Yankees just need to get younger, get more energy on the squad. Easier said than done. And look, I'm not the type of person who revels in seeing people lose their job. But the day that Marcus Timms gets fired from this team, or Aaron Boone for that matter, I still am not convinced that Aaron Boone will be let go. I feel like Cashman and Hal Steinbrenner are going to put the onus on the players. And they're much more likely to change up the roster than the coaching staff. But the day that Marcus Timms gets let go, I'm going to break out the champagne. Going to break out the champagne. I'm just ready for some new approaches up there. And look, I never actively root against the Yankees, ever in my life. However, this collapse could be one of the better things to happen to the Yankees because you can't just move forward with everything that you have. You would alienate the fan base. The fan base knows that this team needs changes, and it's up to Brian Cashman or Hal Steinbrenner to facilitate those changes. We're going to see some change this winter. You can't keep trying what you're trying. Dating back to last season, this is basically a 500 team. DJ LeMahieu had a pinch hit single last night. DJ has had kind of a down year. He's had down years in the past. Michael K had a nice little segment on DJ LeMahieu on his show a couple of days ago where it's just really confounding. It's, it's perplexing as to why he's fallen off. Now, maybe he'll bounce back, but generally as guys age deeper into their 30s in the post-steroid era, they don't get better, right? I, I don't think we can expect DJ to be that guy who hits 360. He had a good season and a half, basically. But he's come back down to earth. I think you have to look at essentially an entire new infield next year. There is a chance that the Yankees could have an entirely new infield. If I'm the Yankees, I'm giving up whoever I've got to give up to go get Matt Olson from the Oakland A's. Matt Olson, I think, would hit 45 home runs with the Yankees. He's got a really good swing. He gets his hands really separated from his body. If you look at his stance, his hands are nice and free. They're not tied up, which allows him to wait a little bit longer because he doesn't have to move his hands back. And then he can drive the ball to all fields. He can hit the ball to the left. He can hit the ball to right. You can't pitch him inside at Yankee Stadium. He'll murder you. And as much as people don't want them to, I could even see them going after Carlos Correa. Because he's young, he's a game changer offensively. He's a big game player. We've seen that in the past. He's got a postseason resume. And you do have Volpe and you have Oswald Peraza, but either one of those guys could play second base or third base. And number one draft pick this year, Trey Sweeney, is far enough away that I don't think that he's going to be a major impact in the infield for at least several years. But if we're being completely honest... We could also see the Yankees doing basically nothing, right? If the Yankees don't make a change at GM or manager, I could see them saying, you know what? We underperformed the last 200 and some odd games, but I think we'll turn it around. We could see them saying that. 
Remember, during the preseason, Aaron Boone said that the Yankees were just trying to, quote, get better in the margins. In other words, add more depth pieces. They already felt like they were the best team. So they wanted to add some little pieces that could make them a little bit more resilient throughout the season. But it's been shown that they have fundamentally underestimated the rest of the division, the Rays and Blue Jays in particular, and the Red Sox for that matter. But the Red Sox are always tough. But they fundamentally overestimated how good their team is. I think next year you got to go into the season with more lefties to begin. Now, they'll probably keep Gallo. I don't see them giving up on Gallo. You've already got him under control. He's a good defender. He does get on base a lot, and he will hit you 30-some-odd home runs. We know the Yankees like home runs. I don't know if they're going to bring Rizzo back. But if you could get him on a short deal, you know, maybe two or three years, I could see it happening. I could also see them try and transition one of these lefty bats like Austin Wells or Trey Sweeney. One of these guys who maybe needs a little bit more defensive development but has a near major league ready bat into a first baseman. And then maybe you go with a short-term solution at first base until one of these guys is ready. That's something you could do. And again, I'm just speculating. I'm just speculating. If it was on me... I would go out and get Matt Olson. Anything you have to deal. If you have to deal Oswald Peraza, I mean, anything short of like Volpe and Dominguez, probably wouldn't trade Luis Heal either. But you might have to give up somebody like Luis Medina, who, again, 100-plus mile-an-hour fastball in the minor leagues, same kind of command issues as Luis Heal, only worse. I was surprised that the Yankees weren't able to move Luke Voigt at the trade deadline After they traded for Rizzo and Luke Voigt was on his way back, you expected him to be traded. And the word from sports writers was that the Yankees were trying to move him, but that other teams didn't value him as much as the Yankees thought they would. You know, maybe that's the injury history over the last couple of years. Maybe it was his rough start to the year, but the Yankees couldn't move him. Maybe if he has a good rest of the season and he hit a home run last night, maybe they can move him this winter. I would try. I think the Yankees are intent on keeping Gio Urshela. Even though he's been a little bit banged up this year, he still has some value, made a nice pick last night. I don't know what you do with Glaber Torres. I mean, the kid just has regressed so much. I mean, sometimes you just got to give up on a good piece of talent. A guy who you know has the skills, but just can't put it together. I've been watching videos of him from when he first came up. He was much more crouched over at the plate. Now he's much more leaned back and kind of upright, but it's his back is straight. He's created a bigger strike zone for pitchers to attack. I feel like he could benefit from making his strike zone a little bit smaller. That's another thing the Yankees need to consider. Get some normal-sized human beings. The strike zone is so big, and everybody throws so hard. You just don't have time to cover these enormous strike zones. I feel like you mix in some guys who have traditional strike zones, you'll get less strikeouts. Double plays have been an issue. I don't know what the solution is there. Hit less of them. <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Hit less, hit less double plays. I mean, it's easier said than done. But I'm frustrated. The Yankees continue to lose. I've been thinking about, you know, how much this channel, like doing the recaps after a loss wears me out. I know you guys love the rants, but I would much rather rant on the freeze, which I'm doing right now, this type of episode. So I'm considering for 2021 doing post-game reactions for wins, right? Then we can go with, like, the hype buildup. You get the lineup. You get the starting pitcher. You get highlights, and then you get a reaction. You get the belt. Everybody's happy and in a good mood. And then if they lose, maybe you get a pre-produced version of the freeze like this the next morning. That way I don't have to hit the airwaves with, you know, a bad mood and sit here grumpy and put on a bad show. That's just, you know, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking. It's been a long season. I've done a lot of different types of content. 
we had morning Yanks after uh, West Coast games for a while, and then we switched to Yankees game night, which was kind of like a uh, pregame show. This is my first full season doing this. You know, we had the abbreviated year last year, and I was just learning how to stream. I didn't really even start streaming live until the end of the season. I didn't have the capabilities for it. I was making pre-produced post-game videos. But now that I can stream, I'm going to continue to do it, but I need to balance it with some of the pre-recorded stuff. And I'm really trying to build out the freeze, this podcast right here. I really want to build this out. So, by the way, if you haven't yet, go subscribe to it on, like, Apple Podcasts or whatever podcast platform you use and give it five stars. It'll help me out a lot. It'll continue to build for next season. And I'll make a point of doing more episodes this winter, more conversations, you know, talk about some of the hot stove stuff that's going on. But, yeah, let me know what kind of content that you guys are looking for for 2022. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm open to the ideas. We've had a, a lot of mixtures of, of content. You know, we have the Yankees game day, which initially the plan was to do that like three to four times per week. But on camera in the morning filming that whole thing, it, it was taking like a couple of hours, two, three hours. So I kind of reduced it to do like, you know, three to five minutes on camera and then a couple of pre-recorded segments about like prospects and things like that. And I haven't been doing as many lately just because the Yankees have been losing and there's not as much to talk about, but hopefully next year, if they're better, we'll be able to continue it uh, and do more episodes that way. I did launch the channel, Huge Baseballs. The link is in the description where I posted a few videos so far that are generic, like to all of baseball, not team specific. And I plan to come out with more content there this winter. Uh, until we get to 1,000 subscribers on that channel, my plan is to simultaneously release the same content on NYY Recaps that I release on Huge Baseballs, just so I can monetize it and not just waste my time. Uh, but I do intend to cross-promote for a while. So we'll see how that works out. It may not work out. Not everything we do works out. But you never know unless you try. All right, guys. One last thing. Do you guys want a recap tonight after the Mets game? Or do you want like a five-inning watch party? Like first five innings. I'm not going to do a whole nine innings. I've been having some health issues the last few days. I've been sick. Um, I had food poisoning last weekend. And it's just been it's been tough all week. Like I've been struggling to, to get my energy back. And so, you know, I can, I can do either – uh, a recap, or I can do like a partial, like let's watch some of the game together. So just let me know what you guys want to do in the comments, and I will proceed accordingly. All right, guys, have a nice day. Like and subscribe, all that jazz. I'll see you next time.